Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, I'm back in the shop again today working on my trusty old Farm All 504. And today and tomorrow, I'm going to take care of the carburetor. And I thought I would pack it all into one video so you can see the complete process. This is Zenith carburetor on this tractor. I'm going to take it off, tear it down, clean it up, rebuild it using a rebuild kit that I got. And it should be fun. So let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the fuel line. And there's fuel in it, so it's going to drain out. And I turn the fuel off at the sediment bowl, so there won't be that much. We'll disconnect the choke cable and take that off. There we go. Take off this goofy spring that I used to compensate for the governor's sloppiness. Hopefully we won't need that anymore. And disconnect the air inlet. Take the carburetor off the intake manifold. There we go. I don't have to worry about disconnecting the governor linkage here because it's disconnected on the other end. If I were just taking the carburetor off, I would have disconnected that. There's the linkage. I took the carburetor outside and cleaned it up with some carburetor cleaner just to get all the, the big junk off of it. Some kind of overall things about these carburetors. Farmall used Zenith on a lot of tractors and they're all pretty much the same to rebuild. They're all, at least in my experience, kind of shaped like this and I'll get into the specific parts. The first thing you want to do is you make sure it's a Zenith and usually the make of the carburetor is written someplace here on the bowl. It says Zenith, made in USA. And then to find the specific rebuild kit, because there's scads of models of Zenith carburetors, you look for this round brass tag up here, which has a whole bunch of numbers on it. And then you absolutely need an INT manual. The INT manual lists all the carburetors that were used on 504, and there were three of them were Zenith and two were Marvel Shubler. I always forget how to pronounce that. But anyway, you can look in the INT manual and cross-reference this number and then you know which carburetor you have. And also when you order the kit, you will find that the rebuild kit number matches what's on the carburetor if you're getting the right kit anyway. Now, the main parts of this carburetor, this is the fuel inlet, this is where the fuel comes in. This is that butterfly I was talking about in the last video that controls the air fuel mixture coming into the tractor so when it's wide open it's getting the maximum and when it's down here it's more down low rpm idle speed this is the choke butterfly in here and this is the choke arm here so obviously when it's cold you close that up to make a richer fuel air mixture in the cold weather there's only one um, adjustment screw on this carburetor and that's the idle adjustment screw here on this top body what else have I got here? Well, I can get into the rest of it as I take it apart. Basically, this carburetor is just two pieces. You've got four bolts in here, you've got the fuel bowl down here, and then you've got the Venturi and the jets up in the top part. So, let's start taking it apart. I got so much crap on all the countertops in my shop from projects that I got going that I just set up another table. It's nice to have a clean surface to do these carburetors. I got my carburetor rebuild kit from McDonald Carburetor in Georgia, and I'm always real happy with the quality of the kits that they use, so that's where I get them. It's not the super duper rebuild kit because this is an oddball carburetor. If you were ordering for say an A or a C or an H or an M, you could get a carburetor kit that's got the butterflies and um, the butterfly rods and things in it, but this kit basically consists of and it covers multiple models of carburetors So you'll have some parts left over a set of gaskets the needle valve and seat for the float and um, the jet and then a bunch of seals for the choke and throttle sh shafts and another needle valve here I always like to have the kit before I start disassembling the carburetor so that I know what I have to keep in good shape because it's going back in. So in this case, the butterflies and the shafts are going back in, which is not a big deal. The only issue that I had with this carburetor really is that the needle valve leaked a little bit on the float. So if I left the fuel on at the sediment bowl, eventually the carb would flood while the tractor was off. So I always had to make sure to turn it off. So I know the needle valve leaks. We're gonna put a new one of those in. First step here is to just separate the two halves of the carburetor, the bowl and the top. 
and there's just four screws here to take out to do that. That's not a factory screw. Hmm. Should come right apart. There we go. So this is the float that regulates the uh, fuel level in the bowl here. This bowl fills with fuel through here and then when the needle valve closes by the floats raising up it puts it keeps the fuel at the right level. This is a venturi that just fell out which is the thing that allows fuel to get sucked into the airstream by magic. We'll do the easier half first. This one's easier to strip. What have we got in here? Well in the fuel bowl we got some crud in the bottom. It's not too bad though. And then we've got the main jet here which we'll have to remove and clean. And my basic rule is if it can come out, I take it out for these cleanings because there's so many little passages in this that you want to make sure get opened up so that when you soak it, all the varnish gets cleaned out of them. Well, first I'm going to take this plug off the bottom. And I believe this access is the main jet. Yep. You can barely see it down there, but the main jet screw head is down in that hole and I can take it out through there. I'll tell you the nightmare in rebuilding carburetors is always am I going to strip out these little brass fittings when I try to take them out. And then you wind up having to drill them out and go looking for a new one and uh, what a nightmare. This one seems to be coming out alright. Does it turn from that end? Yes it does. There's the jet which is one of the means by which fuel sprays into the airstream coming through up through the middle of the carburetor and through the venturi and into the engine. Put all these parts in here so I don't lose any of them. Next while we're in here we'll take out this little plug here which I think is just access to a passage. That in the pan. And then I've got a little plug at the bottom here I like little fine jobs like this where I can sit at a table and study things. I'm more of a fine work guy than kind of brute force work. There's a plug here that can come off. I'm just going to strip it all down. That should just be a bowl drain plug. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a bowl if you ever have to drain the bowl. Oh, it's crappy. We've got all this stripped off now, all this bowl. This is a drain here for when the carburetor floods. It's a copper, I believe it's a copper mesh screen. They can just stay in here. That's no big deal. This is the end of the choke shaft and the choke shaft here. So the next thing we got to do is disassemble the choke butterfly and pull the shaft out. And you can see the butterfly down in there. Sometimes these are a real bugger to get out without stripping the screws, but we'll give it a try. Oh, jeez. That one's easy. There's one. There's two. Where's my pliers? Where did I put my pliers? Oh, get the choke butterfly out of here. Well, come on, you. I might have to pull the shaft out first. Oh. I'll show you why in a minute. The shaft's got to come out first. So take the shaft out. I gotta undo these two screws here. This is a little retainer for the choke cable. On, um, you know, older tractors like the Zenus where you use a lot on the A, B's and C's, you won't have this because you've got a choke rod going up. This is a choke shaft. This is all one assembly here. And it had a little washer on it. Right here. And now this butterfly should come out. There we go. And what you have in this butterfly, when this is closed in the passage, the choke is on all the way and you've got the richest fuel mixture. But even when this is closed, this has got a little spring-loaded flapper on it. And the incoming air will force this flapper to open a little bit. So you get a little air coming through the choke even when it's completely closed. To mix with the fuel and engage the venturi and get up into the engine. So that's pretty common on a choke butterfly. Add in there to be cleaned. What else we got here? We got some seals that need to come out. 
I always save these so that I can match them to the new ones. One felt seal on that side and then we'll pull this out, this plug, and to do that, that fit, we'll just tap it out like my hammer. That's just a plug in the other end of the shaft there. That's it for the bottom half of the carburetor. It's stripped down now. It's ready to go in the soak for the night. Now we can attack this top part. This is the Venturi, which is kind of the magical element of the carburetor, in my opinion. And I'll show you how it works. You've got the fuel bowl down here, which the carburetor's sitting like this. This has got a lot of fuel in it. It's filled almost to the top. It's regulated by whether this valve opens and closes, which lets more fuel in when it gets low. And then you've got the air coming into the carburetor through past the choke butterfly that I took out and up through here. And when you put the two pieces together, the Venturi fell out. That's not a big deal. When you put the two pieces together, you see that the air comes up through this. That's why they call it an updraft carburetor because the air comes up and into the engine versus like in a car engine, the old car engines that always came down. Anyway, the air's coming up through here and the Venturi effect creates negative pressure on the top side of this so that the fuel is jetted into the airstream. That's pretty much how a carburetor works. Not much more complicated than that. Now we got to take this top part apart. And the first thing I want to take off is this float because it's the thing that's most likely to get all dinged up when I'm messing around with it. And these floats, if you look carefully, they're just retained in these this clip here by friction. There's just a straight pin in here, so all you have to do is open up that slot a little bit and then the pin will slide out with a little screwdriver. I need a smaller screwdriver. Oh, well, we'll use this. There. And slide the pin out. Like that. That pin will be in the new kit, but we'll put that We'll put that with our parts that we're going to save here. And then this is the float. You shake it around. If you hear sloshing, then you got a bad float. There's a pinhole in it someplace. I don't hear anything but a little piece of solder that probably fell in there when they were making it. And it's empty, so I know that this float is all right. Put that in the parts bowl. Now this is the needle and seat here. This is the main valve in the carburetor. And if I hold it upside down, the needle valve comes out, it's just a pointy valve. This has got a plastic tip on it, which they often do nowadays. And I'm gonna be replacing that, so that goes in the replace pile. And then the seat is in here. And you just take a screwdriver and turn that seat out. Oh, is my screwdriver big enough? Let's get this gasket off of here. Oh my gosh, I need a bigger screwdriver. I know this is a little bit of overkill, but it's the screwdriver that's got the widest blade to take out the seat. I am grateful to whoever rebuilt this carburetor the last time because they didn't go on it like King Kong and tighten everything down such that it strips coming out. That's the seat that the needle valve fits into. We're gonna replace that. And then this part doesn't come off. This is just the holder for the uh, float that's in here. And go ahead and take this fuel inlet off, if I can find the right size wrench. Turn that off. Typically there's a screen in these. That's kind of the final defense of the carburetor from grit coming in, so we'll clean that up real good. Put that in the parts bucket. Take these off, put them in the parts bucket. These are where it hooks onto the intake manifold. Pull this idle jet out, that'll get replaced. Little jet, little point. The points wear on these, that's where you run into problems. I don't know if you can see, but there's a burnished spot. See where it's burnished about halfway down or a third of the way down? That's wear on the jet. Actually, somebody plowed it into the seat probably too tight and did that. Well, that'll get replaced. We'll pull this plug out. Now we'll take the main butterfly off, the air inlet butterfly here on the top. I'm always thankful when these screws turn out so easily. This is the main butterfly in the carburetor, which is hooked to the governor, as I explained in the last video. We'll we see the, save those screws. Here is a shaft that the butterfly rides on, and with these shafts, choke and 
throttle you want to look for wear around where the where the seals are on both sides because dust will make them wear over time the last thing you want is unwanted air coming into the carburetor in the wrong place these are okay and it's a good thing because I don't have a new set they're not available for this carburetor anymore at least as far as I know now the same as the choke shaft I've got a seal on this end of the shaft right here and then we've got a, a plug on the other side which should come out <laughs> like that you've got just like on the choke shaft you've got a seal on this side and a plug on this side this one didn't have a seal on the plug side again oh where'd my light go here it is now there's only one thing left on this top piece and that's this piece of brass right down in here and I believe this has to do with the idle jet in fact it may be the idle jet itself I don't have a replacement somebody's been in here before and tried to get it out and partially stripped it better to let that dog lie I think um, and I'm gonna leave that in there and we'll blow it out real good and make sure it's clean before we reassemble everything so now the carburetor is ready to go in the dip all right I got a can of carburetor cleaner here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop all my parts in here and let them soak overnight yes I have an ultrasonic cleaner that I could use but I don't know I'm old-fashioned I like soaking them in carburetor cleaner and I've always had good luck with it so that's what I'm gonna do first we'll put in all these little parts get them in there get them in the basket and then we can put the big pieces in I hope they fit that one fits that one is not well maybe I get it hey it all fits and we'll just put the lid on this and let her soak overnight there we go a drunk walks into a bar with a pair of jumper cables around his neck and the bartender says, you can stay, but don't try to start anything. <laughs> Let's pull the parts out and see how they did in the soak overnight. <laughs> Wrinkled up the paint good. Hopefully that won't be too hard to take off. Dump all the little pieces out. And I gotta take all these goodies out and wash them off with water. So I washed them all off with water and did a little scrubbing to get most of the paint off. And now I'll dry them off with some compressed air. And you wanna make sure you get everything really dry and blow through all the orifices and all the holes in the carburetor. And then I use a Dremel with a wire wheel on it just to take off any remaining paint. I like to be really conscientious about this part. I want everything to be Nice, clean, and spotless, even if it takes multiple steps of cleaning to do it. This is aluminum, so it's just a light touch with a steel brush. Just take the paint flakes off, any grime that's left. Here's a pop metal. I don't know. One or the other. It's soft. Here's the fuel bowl, all bright and shiny and clean. My opinion is the devil's in the details with a carburetor. I spend more time than any other step cleaning up these parts, getting all the grit and grime out of them multiple steps. So I've soaked it in carburetor cleaner. I've washed it off in water. I've blown it dry with the air hose. I've gone over it with the Dremel to remove any stubborn dirt. I even went into the fuel bowl here and removed the rest of the varnish with the Dremel brush and then I'll spray it out with carburetor cleaner afterwards to get all the orifices, all the passageways, all clean and spotless. This takes time and I think it's very important. It's something that probably a production mechanic shop wouldn't have nearly the time to do. And having an ultrasonic cleaner really doesn't do it all for you. You still gotta go through these steps. You still gotta look at everything, make sure it's clean, do the detail work to have a carburetor that works perfectly and all kinds of interesting things reveal themselves when you take the time to inspect and clean every part carefully this is the throttle butterfly shaft and while I was cleaning it I noticed that and this is where the governor arm hooks on and I've got a good amount of play there this should be perfectly tight on here and it's not and this could be one of the major sources of my wandering problem with engine RPMs. The other thing I noticed is when this rod goes in here it's got its own bit of play in here. So I think what I can do is I can build this rod up with a little bit of weld and then sand it down smooth and get it to fit in here tight. There's no bushing in this end. And I gotta take this apart here. There's a spring pin in here and pull this out and see 
how it's locked on the shaft and what's loosened up. Phew, disaster averted. <laughs> I pulled out the spring pin that was in here and I couldn't get this assembly loose and off the shaft so I started looking at it and it's got this bronze or brass collar around it that's connected I believe to this inside so I put it in the vise and I took a punch and I punched around the outside of this to tighten the whole assembly back onto the shaft and now it is good and tight there is absolutely no movement and it should be good to go for at least another 5,000 hours, long past when I'm gone. I'm glad I found that. All right, back to cleaning parts. The only thing I got left is this top assembly. There, here's all my carburetor pieces all cleaned up and the last thing I'm gonna do is shoot some carburetor cleaner through all the passages, give everything a final cleaning and then it'll be time to put it back together. All right, well, as they say, assembly is the reverse of disassembly, right? You just gotta remember where all the pieces go. I'll start with the idle screw here, and I have to reuse the spring, the old spring here. Put that in. There, that's on the seat. Next we'll put the fuel inlet on, and I use Teflon tape I know some people might not like this, but it's a little bit of insurance for me, and if I'm careful, I can keep it off the innermost threads so that it doesn't wind up in the fuel passages. Put that in. And we'll leave that loose till we get it on the tractor to adjust it to the right angle for the fuel line. Next, we have a plug that goes in here. Turn that right in. Next we can put this throttle butterfly shaft in and I kept the screws in it so I could keep track of them. Take those out. And I kept the washer on it because I know there's a washer that goes here on the inside of it. Check the fit here. Oh, goes the other way. That goes in there like that. Now we've got the rubber seal that goes in this end of throttle butterfly and then this washer that seats in there and you got to make sure you get this linkage in the right way round. Only really go in one way because you can only put the butterfly on from one side. It's got a flat spot but you've got the movement you need there. It's nice and tight and then we can put the butterfly on this brass one right here and again the butterfly should only go in one way. Let me unscrew this needle valve because it's sticking out into the throat and I don't want to damage it. I can put this butterfly in. Like I said, it'll only go in one way to get the screw holes to line up. Put the screws back in. This is where a magnetic screwdriver comes in really handy. In fact, I think I'll go get mine. Wait a second, that won't work for these screws. They're brass. Well, we'll just have to use our dexterity, right? <laughs> what makes it fun. Some things in life should be a challenge, like a little puzzle. Get in the hole there. Well, you... Actually, this is where I could use a screwdriver that's got one of those little grabbers on the end of it. I'll have to pick one of those up next time at a tool sale. Alright. There's one screw. Set that other one in the hole. There we go. There. Now since these are brass screws, you don't need to tighten them to 300 foot-pounds torque because you'll strip them. You just get them tight to deform the threads a touch and they lock right in there. Check. That works the way it should. Back and forth. And this is uh, one of the throttle limit screws. And now we got to put the plug in the other side, and I got to find the right plug out of this pack of miscellaneous parts, some of which fit this carburetor and some of which do not. That's a ticket. Just tap this in here, and it's got to deform a little bit to be tight in the bore. So I use a socket that's a little bit smaller than plug. There. 
Now we can go ahead and put the float, the needle, and the seat in, and then we'll be done with this top part. And the needle valve is here. And all this is is the seat has a tapered cone-shaped seat in it, and then this needle valve sets in there, and when it goes all the way in, it sets against that seat. The problem with these rubber ones is ethanol tends to eat rubber, and so one way that I get around having these deteriorate is when I'm going to let the tractor sit, I drain the carburetor by running it dry, turning off the fuel and running it dry when I shut it down, and it keeps this from soaking in fuel. Put the gasket on here. I am compensating a little bit with this screwdriver, I think. You know what I mean. Needle valve in there, and I should have a new shaft for the float right here in the kit. You can always tell which way the float goes on. You can see the little dimple there where it's rode on the needle valve, and this side doesn't. So we know the float goes this way. And that pin goes, let's take it through this way. There's the pin in there, and then we need to give it a squeeze on this little part right here to lock the pin in place. Check to make sure that you have free travel here, and the seat is riding, or the needle valve is riding on the floats, and we're good. We'll adjust these later before we put things together, because float height is important. All right, now then we can get to work on putting together the bottom half of the carburetor and we'll just stick this plug back in, the bowl drain plug. And then we've got these two teeny tiny plugs and I believe they both are the same. Actually, one says 17, one says 23 on it. Hmm, which one goes where? How do we figure that out? One looks like it's got slightly smaller threads than the other. Well, that one doesn't fit correctly in there. Let's see here, let's check it out. Nope, that one doesn't fit correctly in there. The threads are slightly different on these two little jets. Each one has a teeny tiny hole through the middle of it and by the number on them, I gather that the holes are slightly different size, but luckily the threads are also different, so each one only fits in one spot. That's usually the way things wind up with these. Next, let's put the choke back in. I got all the pieces here. Here's the old seal. We'll go hunting for the new one here. You got that, and remember there was a washer on here, and the kit gave me a new washer. And then this packing goes in here, like that, and then the shaft goes in. Whoops, wait a second. First, we gotta put this thing on. These are made so that you can put them on different applications so this can go all kinds of different ways. And that's where it's important to take photos. This is actually the way it was on. I can see the witness marks from where the screws seated in on it. So we'll put it in that way. First we gotta put this in. Goes like that. And then that goes on there. And that all slides in there. And that screws on in that position. Then we can put the choke plate in, which will, again, the choke plate will only go in one way. We know that this little springy thing goes toward the inside the carburetor. This little Jenga puzzle here. The butterfly needs to go in and then the choke shaft slides in. And now I got the holes aligned in it, pretty much. And now we gotta put the screws in. Luckily these are metal or steel screws so I can use my magnetic screwdriver. Ooh, don't go down like that. And there we go. 
chokes back in. Now I gotta find the plug for the other side, which I believe is this one. Take this one over the vise and tap it in place. And there we go on that. Next we can put this main jet back in. And that just threads in, remember, here. By the way, on these main jets, there's a whole bunch of little holes here, and you need to make sure that these are all clear. And the way I do it is I look toward a window and you can see the light coming in from the holes and kind of sight through them. But you want to make sure they're all clean. Teeny tiny stuff. Put that in. Tighten it down. And then we got this plug that goes in. I believe we have everything back into it. Before I adjust the floats and put these two halves together, I just wanted to mention about the pilot or the idle jet here. It's called interchangeably in the main jet and how they work. The idle jet, as it says, is, is, as the name says, is designed for when you're at a low fuel load, you know, low RPMs idling. And it's designed to provide enough fuel into the airstream for about 15 or 20 percent of maximum load and so this jet is on all the time and the reason it's on all the time at least this is what i sussed out is it because there's a there's a greater pressure differential after the venturi here so fuel is more likely to get sucked in the main jet is way down here and as you can see the hole in the main jet's a lot bigger the pilot jet is just a little teeny tiny hole in the throat here but the main jet is at less of a pressure differential because it's on the intake side of the Venturi. It's upstream of the Venturi. So when the engine's under load and you've got it at high idle and it's really sucking a lot of air and then you get enough of a vacuum to draw air out of the main jet and so it starts flowing in addition to the pilot jet here in the top. And so the two work together to provide the maximum amount of fuel, but only one is working when the tractor is at low idle. Before I put the gasket on here and put the two halves of the carburetor together, we gotta check the float height. And these seem to be measured all different ways. Sometimes gasket on, sometimes gasket off, sometimes to one side of the float, sometimes the other side of the float. The measurement in the rebuild kit on the instructions tells me that from this point on the float to this surface with no gasket on it, it should be one in five thirty seconds, plus or minus one thirty seconds. So we'll take a measurement here. That one's really out of whack. That one reads one in five sixteenths. It's supposed to be one in five thirty seconds. That one reads one and three eighths. So we're gonna need to do a little adjustment here. So this one needs a little bit of adjustment downward and this is a very delicate adjustment here to do. Still gotta come down. Good for that one. Let's do this one. is good too and they both line up. Now we can take this back apart and put the gasket on. Put that back in. Slide the rod in. And there we go. Pinch that a little bit. When I test fit this bowl on here, I've got a, quite a bit of gasket hanging out and that's because this carburetor kit was made to fit more than one model of Zenith carburetor. So I made a marking around it and I'm just going to do a little trimming here so I don't have too much gasket hanging out. I like things to look neat. We'll do all that without bending these floats. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to take this off and cut it with an exacto knife. All right, I got that trimmed. Make sure that fits all right. Make you got to make sure with the gasket that the holes line up that you don't have it flipped 
the wrong way. And then the Venturi goes in, and this Venturi's got an orientation to it. Oh, let's make sure the way this fits. Goes in that way. And you can tell it goes in after the gasket because it sits flush on this side. So we want to actually set the Venturi in that way. And then put our floats on here. Do a final check on this float height because we want to make sure we didn't mess it up. All this screwing around. And then we put this on here like this over the Venturi. Screws. This middle gasket always goes in dry, and I always leave this gasket that goes to the intake manifold dry in case you ever need to take it apart. One final old timer check. You gotta make sure you can hear the float moving up and down. And that's a, just a simple check to make sure it's not rubbing against the bowl wall here, that everything is oriented all right. Sounds good. Now the last thing to do with it all together is to get the idle uh, valve to its initial setting so it's lightly turned against the seat now we don't want to ram it in there and then the instructions say to turn it out on a turn and a quarter is a beginning adjustment so there's one turn and there's a quarter and then we can adjust this throttle stop screw and what you want to do is this is a throttle in the closed position we want to adjust that screw so that it just contacts in the closed position and I think it was in the right spot to begin with but we're just checking it to make sure. I have this stop screw set so that it contacts the stop pin here with this butterfly in the closed position and then I want to turn it in an additional one and a half turns to open the butterfly slightly. One half, one, one and one half and that's the preliminary idle position is just slightly open in there and that's it this carburetor is all set to go i'll mask it off and paint it before i put it back on the tractor and i just got a call from the case ih dealer and my parts are in for the rest of the tractor so now i can get going on the rest of the tractor i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was informative these carburetors are nothing that complicated as long as you pay attention to what you're doing when you tear them apart and put them back together take a lot of pictures not a big deal. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.